So this is a puppet I recently made for a presentation, and the puppet does the following things. It can bite, and it can wag its tail. So I'm going to show you how to make this puppet, and all of its ugliness. All of these supplies are soft, and using just a pen knife and your hands, you can form them. Uh, so you won't need a saw or a hammer or anything like that. Um, the supplies are a sheet of foam core board, about a third yard of fake fur, maybe a little less, or a little more, depending. Four to six bricks of Sculpey clay in the colors you want. Uh, one pen knife or X-Acto knife. Um, one square balsa dowel, so it'll look kind of like a beam, and a one fourth inch round pine dowel, or you could use another wood. You just don't want a balsa dowel, you want something that's a little stronger. Uh, one hot glue gun and glue sticks, a two foot long piece of string, a uh, butcher's string is great or twine, and one piece of cushioning foam, like ripped out of an old piece of furniture cushion, or a car sponge. Optionally, you may want acrylic paints. I used clear acrylic sold as the brand name Modge Podge to make mucus drooling out of the nose of my little creature. These supplies cost me about $20. Uh, it may cost more or less depending on how you get them and what you already have at home. I started by cutting the base, which is the upside down pear shape on the left, and the tail, which is the crescent shape on the right, out of foam core board. I drew them first using a marker and then cut them out using the pen knife. So here's the puppet without the fur added so you can see how the mechanisms work. There's a string that connects the pivot on the jaw to the pivot on the tail. There's a loop tied in the string and a hole in the foam core board, so you can slip your finger in while you're working with the puppet and control the action. Note the penny weight on the tail. So here you see the tail assembly, and it's just three pieces of foam core board with the tail. A string is hot glued to the corner of the tail to pull it and make it move, and the tail pivots on a dowel. It's not glued to the dowel. The dowel's hot glued on either side into the assembly. Now there's a crossbar holding the whole thing up and preventing the tail from swinging too far forward. It helps to stabilize it so it doesn't fall down. And finally, everything's hot glued together except the tail. The tail's free swinging on the dowel. So here you can see the assembly for the head's pivot. Um, this is pretty simple. It's just three pieces of balsa wood out with a dowel through them. And the dowel's hot glued on either side. It's got a crossbar and that keeps it from being pulled over uh, with stress. And then hot glue holds it all together. After the tail and jaw assembly are finished, you connect the two with a piece of string that has a loop in the center, and then you put a sheet of foam over the top. The foam uh, makes like a train tunnel, like an arch, and on top of it, for me, I put pieces of foam core board representing the spine and shoulder blades of the puppet, so when people pet it, it feels like it has bones. Next I'll show you how I assembled the head out of Sculpey. To save on Sculpey and only use a little bit, you have to work in layers. First, build the bottom of your layer, uh, put some holes in it for grab holes, and bake it. Then, flip it over, and use those grab holes to hold a new layer of clay. Bake it, and so on and so forth. This way, you can use only a few packs of clay to do a very large piece. After the last layer of clay has been through the oven and is hardened, then you can paint on any extras you want and finish assembling the puppet.